Excellency, sir. Uh, His Excellency Brigadier Bio, retired, and President of Sierra Leone, and your distinguished delegation, the ministers of Uganda, and the officials. I hope you are all informed that Sierra Leone means a mountain which looks like a lion. I, I assume that ignorance is not around. It was so named by the Portuguese when they were trying to go around Africa. I think they got there in 1460 or 70. When they got there, 1477. The first one who got there. When he saw that mountain, it looked like a lion. So Sierra, Sierra in Spanish means a mountain. Lion, Leone is the lion. So these people are lion people. Your Excellency, you are most welcome. I have not been to Sierra Leone, but recently I was in uh, Guinea Conakry. And they are great people, those people in West Africa. So I'm very happy and I congratulate His Excellency for being elected. and for having been in the army, which faced a lot of problems, but eventually, with the assistance of friends, was able to restore stability in uh, Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is now stable and developing. We also should congratulate our Sierra Leone brothers and sisters on overcoming uh, Ebola, because Ebola was a big problem there. Here we, have, we had some previous experience of dealing with Ebola, but in West Africa they didn't have. But they managed to overcome it, and I, we congratulate them. Our discussion is centered on uh, point number one is the long term. The long term, I think in the delegation, the, the joint committees which are going to meet, you have to discuss how to link West Africa with East Africa, infrastructure-wise. However, when I, I, I rode recently on the train from Mombasa in Kenya to Nairobi, we were discussing the issue of the railway from here through Congo up to the ocean, I think in Brazzaville, around Brazzaville, Point Noir, so somewhere near on the Atlantic. That sort of railway would be like the Panama Canal. You remember North America and South America, they're very long. And uh, those people being, be, being business-minded, they saw that going around the southern tip of, the, of, of America, which they call Terra de Fuego, the land of the mist, should learn some more Spanish. 
would be too, very long and costly. So that's how they made the Panama Canal, which cuts North and South America. And therefore you can go from the Caribbean Sea to the Pacific, just like that. So this, uh, this railway, the concept is the same. A cheap transport way across the belt, the belt of Africa, which links the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic. And then you continue by water to, to West Africa. So this is something that we shall have to discuss more with Congo, with Brazzaville, and with West Africa. And the reason I, I encourage this is that there are a lot of resources here in East Africa, and a lot of human beings here. Because Uganda would be 100 million people in 2050. So you'll have a lot of human beings on this side. With, with the resources. But then you also have a lot of human beings on that side. Nigeria. Mainly Nigeria and then the other countries. Guinea, Conakry, Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, but also with a lot of natural resources. Here we are happy, very soon we shall open a steel industry using the iron ore deposits in Tororo, in Suku. And we, we are happy because we shall no longer import steel. Because we need a lot of steel now that we are we have woken up from sleep. You know, when people are sleeping, they don't have any problem. When you are asleep, you don't worry because you don't know what's happening. It is when you wake up, then you start to, if, getting worried, what is that one knocking here? That, what is that one? So now we have, now we have, these people have woken up here by building more dams. We're building more dams, more dams of electricity. So when you build more dams of electricity, then you find you need a lot of cement, you need a lot of steel. But where is the steel? Oh, the steel is in China. There's, there's no steel here, so what do we do? We go to China now. Long distance. When you buy steel from China, you actually don't buy steel. Most, much of it is, is air. Because they have got what they call CIF. Cost, insurance, and freight. <laughs> now, of the three words, Two are air, only one is real. The cost, the cost of the steel, where you bought it from, the amount you paid for the steel. But the rest, insurance, imagine insurance. Because it is coming from China, you must insure it. When it is moving, you are insuring. And you pay, you, you the sleeper, the one who is asleep. You pay for the insurance. The freight, 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 the transport, you pay. So out of, out of three, only one is actually of value to you. The rest is, you're just, you're just giving money to other people. So that's how we are happy to have this uh, steel industry here. We shall no longer pay insurance. We shall no longer pay freight. But even the cost will be less because we are using our own cheap labor to produce the steel. 
when you buy steel made in China, made in India, you pay also for the high cost of labor of those places. So we are happy we are having this steel industry. But when you look at our iron ore reserves, there are only 300 million tons, what we have discovered so far. That's not bad. If we are consuming uh, one million tons per year, that will take uh, you people, when I'm, I will no longer be around, I will be in heaven by that time. <laughs> it will take you 300 years if you consume one million per, per year. But in Sierra Leone, in Guinea Conakry, in Liberia, I don't know the reserves in, uh, in Sierra Leone, but I know the ones in Liberia. Four billion tons of iron ore. Here we are talking of 300 million and we are very happy. But in Liberia, you are talking of four billion tons. So you can see, you Africans, when your population goes up to 2.5 billion, by 2050, 2050 I will still be, be around, I think I will. <laughs> you will need a lot of steel to build houses. They have a lot of bauxite for aluminium in West Africa. They have diamonds. Diamonds are I don't use diamonds so much, so I'm not worried. I think those are for the daughters who want uh, necklaces. But iron and, and bauxite and other minerals, including gold, there are plenty there. So this route will really be very, very crucial. So that's one point we, we, this, this committee we are talking about should look at. Then we also talked about capacity building, like training together. Uh, at one time, some officer cadets had come from Sierra Leone and had been here. I think there were trained like 10 of them during the time of the, of the foreign minister was a lady. I'm glad there's another lady now. But you, that time when there was a phone, we, I think we, the, the somewhere trained, so we can, we can share those experiences. So these two, the capacity building, especially for security, and the, the plan for the infrastructure of the stomach, because they really touch our lives, security and economy. But then there are other issues on which we are cooperating, the diplomatic. UN, I don't know what, is the chairman. And he has been leading us very well. Even his predecessor, His Excellency Koroma, was leading us very well. So I'm very happy His Excellency came. Uh, we have had a long talk, and we shall talk more. And uh, I welcome him to come to Uganda and share their experience with us. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Give these people the wisdom. Thank you. I bring you warm greetings from West Africa, Sierra Leone. I see you don't have Lion Mountains, but I wonder how you got the name Lake Victoria in the middle of Africa. <laughs> I still have to do my research. But I want to say that I'm particularly pleased to be in this great country, Your Excellency, and I want to seize this opportunity to register our profound and sincere gratitude to you President Museveni, the government and the people of this great country. When I got the invitation, 
it was one that I was expecting and I took the opportunity immediately to accept that I would be here. On behalf of my delegation, I want to register our gratitude again for the warm African reception that we have received. And I look forward to coming back here as many times as possible. In Africa, we are talking about the African continental free trade area, which means we want to get rid of the distances and do more investment within the continent and trade, and to allow our people to move more freely within the continent. For so long, our continent has been used as the bread basket for other continents and people. In the fourth industrial, elect, uh, uh, um, fourth industrial revolution that is coming, I want us to be smart so that we will not be at the receiving end of this great movement. So we Africans have to be smart and try to share in the benefit of what lies ahead of us. So we are here to learn from your leadership and this great country the many strides you've made to bring about development to this country. We know Uganda has had a difficult past, but how you have been able with the great people to move the country to where it is today, I cannot say it's a miracle, but it's one that we admire and we want to learn from you people. So, and to share the little that we have that you may need. But I know that you have done a great lot to bring peace and tranquility, which is the ecosystem needed for development. And indeed, you have registered development in this country. We have had a similar past. We share the same colonial master. We have been at war with ourselves. We have faced corruption, unbridled corruption. We have been hit by Ebola like you. We've had a terrible past, all of which has impacted the trajectory of development in Sierra Leone. But today, Uganda is a better place. Thanks be to your leadership and the people of this country who have supported you. So we want to learn from all of these, from those that are in critical positions, the decisions you've made, and how we also can take a page from you. From Ebola, a few years ago, our economy was completely ruined. From the war, we almost lost the state. It completely collapsed. But because of our resilience and determination, today Sierra Leone is a peaceful democracy. As a government, um, we are barely a year old. We have had to face the difficult task of telling the world that Sierra Leone is no longer at war, that there is no more Ebola in Sierra Leone, and to try to shed that ugly image of being one of the most corrupt countries in the world. We are asked whether the war is over, whether Ebola is still there or not. So for me, that repetition of damage, which took a toll on our country, is one thing that I have been personally trying to fight. And without the necessary 
wherewithal I could not hire a PR company to do this. So I have had to do it myself. So with my team, we have gone around the world to tell them that Sierra Leone is a peaceful democracy and that we are creating the authoritative environment that is inviting. And in Uganda too, I want to invite investors who have had a pleasant experience here to come and look at our own investment climate and see what investments we can do. Of course, as President Museveni has said, we have a lot of natural resources which we still need to tap into. We still have agriculture that we need to do more seriously. And I'm sure that there are investors here in this country who can actually help us. So this is an opportunity for us and to also invite those who are here who would want to have an experience in Sierra Leone. We are very happy, Your Excellency, the government and people of Uganda to be here today. And uh, I'm going to be here for the next few days. And I'm going to go around and talk to as many people as possible to learn from these experiences. On behalf of my delegation, I extend to you, Your Excellency, the government and people of this country our profound gratitude not only for the warm welcome that we have received, but also the hospitality accorded me and my delegation. Thank you very much. I thank His Excellency for his uh, kind words. Victoria is the name of um, an old lady who was running England when the British came here first time in 1894. But the lake has its own name. It is called Narubare. Narubare is the, is the lake of, of God, that God stay there. The Rubare is Rubare, but Rubare, but Katondo, <laughs> the, so Nalubare is the lake of the gods. We believe the gods stay there. So we shall have six questions. Two from Uganda, two, uh, three from Uganda, three from Sierra Leone. Because we must go to eat, we must go and eat. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Uh, from paying for visa and getting visa easily. If we are talking of the African free trade area, how come you are sort of subjecting citizens uh, to, to the hassle of getting visas while exempting yourself, uh, yourselves which means, why is it so hard to give free visa for everyone when many African leaders are doing it anyways? Well, thank you very much, Asim. No end. <laughs> then you, you, you gradually move forward. The horizontal migration of populations in Africa should be managed carefully. Because I don't want backwardness to migrate from one, one African country to another African country. To transport poverty from country A to country B. So if you just open like that, you will find the peasants who have nothing, no value addition to add. They're just bringing problems from one country to another one. 
that one will not, will not help. And you know it, you know it here, there's a lot of uh, that uh, horizontal, 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 not vertical, horizontal from A to B, B to, C, to A, but without any, 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 anything. So it, I was not consulted, but I think they handled it well, because they said, first of all, officials. They said, officials, this move without, don't have to pay for visas. Then they said, who else? Service, service chiefs, meaning army officers. Then, um, then leaders. So this is the starting point. I think the next layer should be business people. The next layer would be business people. But how will the business people move if the officials have not moved, if the leaders have not moved, if the service people, the, the, the uh, um, uh, security people have not moved? So this is just uh, like a beginning, but I think the next layer would be the business people, uh, which means you should have a registered business in, in Sierra Leone or Uganda. Uh, but if you are moving, looking for land to cultivate, to cultivate primitively, <laughs> like you are doing in Uganda, I, I don't want my Bafuruchi to invade Sierra Leone, because they have a lot of land. No, I don't, Bafuruchi means uh, the one who migrates. Furuka is to migrate. Now Bafurichi are the immigrants. I am very careful not to spoil my reputation <laughs> in Sierra Leone because if, if I say you can go to Sierra Leone without a visa, I can see one million Ugandans <laughs> arriving in Sierra Leone to grab land, because, because the, the land there, Sierra Leone has got a less population. They have maybe a lot of land. So I don't want my people to go and invade Sierra Leone. So let's do it in a, a regulated way, a, a regulated, purposeful value. They, they normally say value for money. In this case, it's not money, but, uh, but policy for value. We should have policy for value, not just uh, policy for no value or, or, or for creating more problems. I have not been consulted, but I thought that may be the, 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 the rationale behind. Uh -huh. The second question. Yes, in addition to extractive, um, you know, especially iron ore, and Sierra Leone has extensive reserves of iron ore. How would Uganda help Sierra Leone develop a steel industry? We, we, I, I will talk with His Excellency. <laughs> with others who helped us to, to develop our own uh, iron ore, I'm sure I will link them with His Excellency. Mm. But turn. when China was developing, the price of steel went up to $900 per ton. Now, a few years ago, some clever Indians came and told me that they wanted to export our iron ore, because it is very high grade. It is very high grade. It's, it's among the best in the world. It is very pure. It is not so much like the one in uh, Liberia or, or or, or, or Sierra Leone, but it's a very high value. It is 70% pure. So these Indians wanted to take the soil, because when you export iron ore, you are exporting soil. They wanted to take African soil, which contains iron ore, to India. And how much would they pay me? $47 per ton. And for him, 
because our iron ore is 70% pure, it is almost from one, one ton of ore you get like 700, uh, almost a, a ton of, of, of ore, you get a ton of, of steel. So, me, the fool, the fool, you were seven, would get $47 for a ton, and this clever Indian would get $500 for what I got $47, which is mine. But in the process, the jobs, because when you build a steel factory, you are creating jobs. So those jobs will be done not by my grandchildren, because my children are now getting older, so they, they, they may not be able to, 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 to work in factories. It is the grandchildren. So the grandchildren will not be, will not be working in this factory. It is the, the children of the Indians who will be working in that factory. So by, by exporting uh, raw materials, you are exporting money, but also jobs. It's really uh, terrible. So it's good that we have, uh, I, I said, this iron ore has, has been in the ground for the last 30 billion years. Let it stay there until I get somebody to do it properly. And that's what has happened. We, we have now got uh, people who, are, who can do it properly. And I would like to share that with our West African uh, brothers and sisters. Mm. In Africa now, I will ask about uh, technology. We are in a race, uh, Africa and the whole of the world, to win the... And how does that help us to integrate, to share ideas as Africans, uh, to win this race, but to also have the free trade? Of course, the 21st century... The, the issue of technology can be better answered by younger people. <laughs> In this 21st century, technology matters. And it is leading and it will lead the way. Um, Your Excellency, you were just talking about jobs. Um, I believe that at the rate at which we are going, very soon human beings are going to be competing with robots for jobs. Because some robots that have been made are more efficient and more effective than we human beings. So that takes me to how we educate our next generation. Purposeful education. Education for employment. One that is critical for the period ahead of us, for the uh, fourth industrial revolution. Um, my flagship program in Sierra Leone is education, quality education. But I've enveloped that in what I call human capital development. And my definition of human capital is slightly different from that of the United Nations and other world bodies. But I've coined it that way because I believe that in Africa, if we can feed our people food security, give them the type of education needed for the future, the skills and knowledge needed for the future, and also take care of their health, we can do wonders. The average African can survive and thrive anywhere in the world if the three I have spoken about is provided. So how can we, Africa, lacking behind in so many ways, catch up with the rest of the world? We cannot take the conventional steps and catch up because we have been kept backwards. To take that quantum leap means we have to use technology for governance, for 
health, for delivery of a lot of services, for education, to be able to, ca to catch up. Only technology can give us that quantum leap so that we can catch up with the rest of the world. If we say we are going to stick to the old conventional means, we will never. And I believe that in terms of the brain power, we have it. So we just have to tweak our educational program in Africa to make sure that it is suitable or taking into consideration what is needed in the marketplace, in the job marketplace in the future. If we do that, the quantum leap that we need to catch up with the rest of the world will come in handy. A lot has been done, <coughs> and technology is a tool. We have to use it. We cannot afford not to use it. So it is left with us in Africa to actually look at our curriculum in terms of education and make sure it is fit for purpose so that our kids will be fit for purpose in the 21st century. That is what I think uh, we can use um, technology for. It is moving so fast, even we, as uh, um, um, His Excellency has said, technology is best handled by younger people. We are also struggling because every day new softwares are coming. You have to, in fact, now the technology itself is upgrading itself, or you do it manually. You wake up in the morning, there are new softwares added, either to improve or to protect. So, so much is happening and we cannot afford to keep to the baby steps, the conventional steps. Technology is the way to go and I, we encourage all Africans to really deploy technology, employ technology in trying to catch up with the rest of the world. We have to make Africa great again. Of engines. Because it started with the engines for pumping water and then later on steam engine uh, for, the, for the railway. Then toward the end of the last century, the second revolution was electricity, uh, the use of electricity. And then in the 1960s, the revolution was automation automation. Now, this fourth industrial revolution, uh, what His Excellency is, is, is uh, uh, strongly telling you, is the artificial intelligence, where the machines now can be made to do work of people more efficiently than even the human beings. And he's absolutely right that uh, it's not only now, at every stage, when any society lags behind in technology, they become slaves. The first time Egypt, the ancient land of, of Egypt, our land, was conquered by foreigners was in about 600 70, I think, BC, when it was conquered by a group called the Hyksos, because they had invented the use of iron tools. People in the past were using brass, brass tools. But these people from, I think they were from uh, what is now maybe Take or something, they were using the iron tools. Now the iron tools were more efficient than the brass. So that's how Egypt was conquered for the first time. And later on we were conquered because we, 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 we lagged behind in the technology of gunpowder. 
the Europeans started using gunpowder when we were still using spears. <laughs> then, so every time you lag behind in technology, you are bound to be a slave. That's what I, I, would, I would add to what, what His Excellency was saying. So we cannot afford now to again lag behind. But of course what you need to, uh, to know also is that even when new technology comes, the, the players are the same. You have a consumer, you have a producer of a good or a service, and a consumer. Even when the, even when the machines produce products, somebody must buy them. If somebody doesn't buy them, that, that business will collapse. So still the old uh, equilibrium will be there if we are ready. We are re the, the most important thing is to be ready both as producers, but also as an organized market. And, th and that's why His Excellency was telling you about the CFTA, the common, the co continental free trade area. If we, if we consolidate it, and we also move on technology, nobody will, will, will beat us, because we have everything. We have the producers and also the market. And we can use our market to begin with others to, to access their own markets. Uh, three final questions. To really follow what's going on in Khartoum, I think for Khartoum we are now depending on the uh, one who has been involved and the African Union. Uh, let's see what they are doing. Because I've not been uh, involved in that one. Number five question. Um, from State House Communication in Freetown to Leon. Oh, the, <laughs> so it my question. It, it seems there's good, good food there. <laughs> <laughs> so my question will be, uh, um, our president has actually um, prioritized diversifying the economy in Sierra Leone. So um, he wants to develop the human capital and also develop agriculture. And um, when it comes to export, um, agriculture is really contributing to a lot when it comes to export in Uganda. Now, how can it contribute to the economy of Sierra Leone? Is there any experience that we could share that Sierra Leone will actually? Uganda have the business movement right from the student days was very clear about that issue of export oriented growth and exporting value-added products, not raw materials. In fact, when we were fighting, we had what we called 10 points, 10 political points, security, and so on and so forth. Now, one of them, point number five, was the point of building an economy that is integrated and self-sustaining, which means when we produce cotton, we don't export it as cotton. We, we put it in the factories and we, 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 we integrate agriculture with the, with, the fa with the industry. And we produce textiles. That's what we export. And so on and so forth. The minerals, the same like I was telling you. Integration, integrating agriculture with industry, mining with industry, and with services, uh, and then all for internal, for import substitution, because there are two, there's import substitution and export promotion. So our, our movement was very clear from the beginning, but initially we didn't have the base because you, you may talk about something, but if you don't have the electricity, you don't have the good roads, you don't have the railway, 
Sierra Leone is, is, is much better off because for you, you have a coast. You have a coast. You are, you are, you are near the, the ocean. In the case of Uganda, we were deep inside the continent, landlocked. We are like Burkina Faso or like Mali. That, 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 that's how we are. Maybe Burkina Faso, because Mali have, they have the river. They have the river, the, the Niger. So, although our orientation was clear, but the base had to be cleared, had to be created. Uh, so what has happened now is that finally we have the base, we have uh, enough electricity. We are working on the, on the railway. Uh, education, we started long ago. So we have got a lot of educated people. They are not, many of them are not fully uh, technological, but they are also not illiterate, which is an advantage. The literacy rate has gone up. It is now 75%. Uh, so because of doing that, we are then able now to integrate some of the sectors, like the cotton. Cotton with the, with, with the factory. That one is moving now, the cotton. The milk, the milk. When we came here, these Ugandans were buying powdered milk from Denmark. They will go to Denmark, they get powder of milk from there and bring it here and put in water of Lake Victoria and stamp that it was called Uganda Dairy Corporation. The only dairy there was water. <laughs> but we, we woke these people up and not only did we make them produce milk from the farm, but we also process it. So that, that sector is moving well. Then you, you cannot believe that these Ugandans of yours were importing furniture. Furniture from China, you can imagine. Furniture from Dubai, a desert. A desert was, uh, was sending furniture to, to, to these uh, Africans of yours. That one is now going down because the, 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 the linkage between the forest products and the factories is, is coming up. So we are going, now I told you about the iron ore. Uh, tomorrow His Excellency will visit some of the factories dealing with some, some other line. So the whole, the whole spectrum, Africa is so rich, we've got everything here. It is only the what do you call sleeping in Mandingo? When, when somebody is asleep, you, you don't have Mandingo, you terminate. Mende. Mende. What do they call sleeping? Njinu. And Njinu, the, 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 too much Njinu here. <laughs> too, too much Njinu. So they are waking up from the Njinu uh, Bambara. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, are, they are waking up. We are going sector by sector, sector by, for instance, his Excellency, tomorrow I, I saw from the program he will visit one factory of, of, of medicine, making drugs. That's moving well, but we still have some gaps. In that factory of medicine, yes, they are making medicine, but when you make medicine, that tablet, not all of it is medicine. Much of it is starch. They get starch from cassava, from uh, maize, and you put a little medicine and you swallow. The starch is to, to, to carry the medicine into you. Now, if you ask that factor when you go there tomorrow, when you go there, you, you will hear that, that they are still importing starch from India, imagine. So I'm now working to fill that gap. Don't import starch from India because you have got cassava here and you call it manioc. 
whatever you call it. You have cassava here. You have maize. Why are you importing starch? So we, we, we want to fill that gap also. Uh, then some of the medicines, uh, the, the children medicines, many of them need uh, syrup, something sweet, so that the children can take the medicine. That's just uh, sugar. But sugar, which is highly refined, not the one of drinking. The sugar we have now is the one of drinking, for, for, drinking, for drinking tea. But we, we need to refine it further to have the industrial grade sugar, pharmaceutical grade sugar, so on. So it's a, a long, long struggle, but the sleeping, sleeping is, is in, 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 in what? Njino. The big problem is Njino. We had to wake up these people. They were really in Gino. They have no problem. Importing everything. You know, they were even importing dead people's clothes. They call them second hand. Do you have second hand clothes in West Africa? Second hand clothes. Where did this cloth come from? Who was the original owner? Well, we don't know who it was. This is the one who died. <laughs> so it's a long struggle, but once you get out of the Njinu, uh, the final, was, was it final or the, this was number five? I mean, if we are in a race to reach DRC and go on so that we are able to compete with our neighbors. No, we are not competing with them. Gets to Mwanza, gets to Isaka. If they want to pass through Uganda, they can pass through Uganda. If they want to pass through Rwanda, they can pass through Rwanda. They go into the DRC, Congo. Ours, we shall, we, shall, we shall link to the one which is going to, to DRC. There's no problem at all. So there's no, there's no race. It is, we are walking, walking in the same direction. Because if they want to, if, if the railroad comes from, uh, uh, it must take a rational line. And the shortest line from, from Indian Ocean to the Atlantic can be measured, can be measured. We know that this is the shortest uh, and the easiest in terms of, of terrain and so on. So even if you go through Tanzania, if you enter, you enter Congo through Uganda, no problem, we shall link there. If you avoid Uganda and you enter Congo through somewhere else, we shall link with where you have, you have entered. No problem. Uh, so there's no competition at all. It is to get means of cheap transport from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic. This is the challenge for all of us. OK, thank you so much. Um, honorable ministers, um, may I invite the invited guests to go across to the banquet hall for the luncheon 